Well, hello and welcome to Bowtie Life, where we talk about mostly about life in the garden. And uh, this year, August, is probably the most the garden has gotten away from me. It is very overgrown and in great need of attention because I've lost about seven weeks of productivity so far this summer and I'm gonna lose another week uh, here shortly because uh, we're traveling again. So yeah, the garden's are growing, but not like we wanted to. So here we go. Hi, I'm Bowtie Dave. So, you saw the opening sequence there. That was uh, yesterday. You can tell the difference by the new bow tie. So, talking about getting discouraged in the garden and uh, things that are happening that you just hadn't planned for. But uh, there are times when it's gonna happen. And it's really a good time to learn, not about gardening, but how to give yourself a little grace and a little understanding. Uh, we've had a very busy summer. It has been um, several months, a few months of just very hectic living. Uh, we've, I've stayed at the cabin in Arkansas four times now. Uh, had a trip to Des Moines and a trip to Kansas, to, trip to, um, well, we had visits from family from had my son and his wife and their kids, which y'all saw a video from that. And we had a visit from uh, cousins in Louisiana. Uh, so we had a lot of fun, had a great time with everything, but uh, the garden just took a uh, distant second seat to everything else happening <laughs> in, in reality. So it does happen sometimes, and sometimes you just gotta give yourself some grace, but as a result, we've had losses in the garden. We've had, uh, we've had weeds get overgrown in some places, and it's going to be a little more work, a little more work. Actually, I think it'll probably be a little less work because we're gonna discuss a couple of different ways to take care of some overgrown areas that uh, have completely, completely overgrown and some simpler ways to take care of those situations. So I'm out here, it is August 19th. Uh, and you'll notice we, uh, we're getting a little earlier in the month each month. I've been doing these video tours every four weeks, not every at the end of every month because my ultimate goal is to get my garden tours at the very beginning of the month uh, instead of at the end of the month. I think that uh, I've been doing myself a disfavor, disservice by starting my garden tours at the end of every month. Uh, when I'm going back looking at my notes, I have to go back and look at the previous month for what's happening. Uh, so in other words, I have to look at July of last year to see what happened in August of last year. So, you know, and, and it's, it's, uh, a little confusing so I decided that I wanted my benchmark so what I'm doing over the next uh, I don't know 12 to 14 months is I'm going to be doing the uh, garden tours every four weeks until we're at the beginning of the month so we're never going to miss our pattern so to speak but uh, we'll be just getting towards the beginning of the month within a year which is fine because uh, we are still in our first two years. Would you believe this is, I think, month 17 of doing these garden tours? I'm very excited. Uh, we've, we've owned this property. We're coming up on uh, 23 months, so almost two years. And uh, no, 22 months. Oops. <laughs> 22 months. And uh, still almost two years since we moved in here. We've done a lot here. Um, but you know, with a new YouTube channel, uh, you have to expect to pay your dues and get stuck when getting started. And, uh, this is just us getting started. And I figure my, in my, 
estimation I'm going to be paying my dues and to grow my uh, channel to the point where I can be monetized for the first three years. Uh, I think that's not an unreasonable expectation. So anyway, we're out here on a on a August morning. It's a little after 9 a.m. and um, the weather has been frightful uh, this past month, month and a half. Um, we've had very few breaks from the heat and, uh, some people might say, well, you've had the lows. Well, the lows have been hot too. Our, in here in the panhandle of Florida, the highs are in the nineties. The lows are just barely in the eighties. So our, our temperatures change from the high to the low only about five to eight degrees, which is a little bit, which would be a, a overwhelming if uh, we didn't have air conditioning in the house. So I'm very thankful for air conditioning. But uh, anyway, um, we, we live in a microclimate here in Destin, Florida, uh, which is really interesting. You're, you're, the camera's actually facing kind of uh, west-northwest, uh, just a few miles, maybe 12 miles to the north over here and 12 miles to the west. They do not have completely surrounded by bay on one side and gulf of mexico on the other side and that actually keeps our temperatures at least five degrees cooler at the highs of the day and so weather is really interesting i think weather is really interesting you get these little areas like this suddenly this little place is just been perfect weather all summer we have hit 95 degrees maybe twice i think it's once but maybe twice uh, this year so far and just over there I was just talking to a gardener from Fort Walton Beach the next town over and uh, she was talking and I said fortunately we've only hit 95 and she said no I remember 100 degrees a few times and I had to remember oh wait she's over there in Fort Walton Beach completely different area uh, I was like okay yes you have had it and so all her tomatoes have deceased uh, and that we'll get we'll get to the tomatoes here later. We have some tomatoes over here in the front and side garden, which is where we're at. But uh, yeah, so just by 10 miles. And uh, I, I think it's interesting, you know, you hear another good example is when people are in high elevations. Um, just go a few miles down the mountain, completely different weather. In Arkansas, our cabin, uh, we're at high elevation. Okay, it was 1,560 feet. And our weather was completely different than two miles later when we're at um, just a little over a thousand feet. And so, yeah, it's, it might, these microclimates, you know, we talk about growing zones and growing zones technically are quite irrelevant for uh, vegetable gardening because growing zones has to do with winter temperatures, not summer temperatures. And so those summer temperatures vary. And so when you're looking for what you're going to grow, you got to be sure to be, test and check out research uh, what's going to do good in your area. And, and as we've been covering in our small space gardening series, uh, one of the first things we talked about is there's so many different kinds of so many different plants, tomatoes, for example, some tomato cultivars, that's what they call them, cultivars, are more heat resistant than others. And so you don't want a cultivar that's not heat resistant at all if you're living in a place like this. Now, you go over there 10 miles over, it doesn't matter what tomato you grow, they're not gonna last in 100, 110 degrees. Uh, so you gotta be careful about what you plant and when you plant, because, and that's the other big thing we talk about in our small space gardening series. I keep pointing that way because that's where our first uh, little tomato plant is. You'll have to go see the series to, to see that. But um, anyway, uh, we, it, it can also change your season. Because if you're trying to grow tomatoes during, and you have a very hot summer, um, you're not going to be able to grow them. You have to grow them in a, maybe you have a long spring and a long fall. Well, suddenly you have two growing seasons you can grow tomatoes. And I did not take advantage of that. I had a volunteer tomato this past spring. Uh, we have squirrels playing in the trees all over us. So you might hear, whoo, they are going crazy. I think they must be a uh, little randy. But anyway, um, 
Last year we had a volunteer tomato that started in February or March. You'd have to go back and look at the garden tours for the raised beds, but uh, that thing produced really great. It was our first producer for the first part of the summer. And I need to take advantage of that more often. I need to get my tomatoes in the ground a lot earlier. Started in February and we started them late this year and we were trying to grow over the summer and they all started dropping their leaves, their, their buds because uh, it was too hot. The beans have stopped producing, which is a little discouraging, uh, but we're hopeful, we're watching the weather forecast closely because uh, um, eventually it's gonna start dropping off. The temperature is gonna uh, ease off a little bit and we'll, we'll be doing better. Can't wait because this heat is getting a little bothersome. Right now, it's nice out here. It's it's uh, upper 80s. Uh, the, the other part, of, I mean, we've been having heat indexes the same as everybody else because we are so humid. Imagine, no matter which way the wind, well, in this case, barely blows, uh, you're getting humidity either off the Gulf or right now off the Bay. Um, and uh, that's creating more humidity. So we are actually a little more humidity than the other side of the Bay, just 10, 12 miles over there, which, just blows my mind sometimes. So anyway, let's get on with a garden tour and uh, we're gonna start in the same place as usual. A lot of things have grown over since the last garden tour four weeks ago. In fact, four weeks ago, things were heading this direction, but <laughs> whew, things have really headed, uh, I'd say south, but uh, yeah, maybe south because nothing's been done. Well, I mean, I've lost, I think I've lost a total of seven weeks of productivity this summer uh, from traveling, from visits, from uh, being sick. I got sick uh, for a little while. And so life, life just happens. And sometimes life does just happen. And this summer was a very unusual summer for us. We, we dealt with uh, the cabin, um, which means I won't be going to the cabin two, three, four, or five times a year anymore. So that's gonna give me more time in the garden. So anyway, let's go get, start taking a look in the garden and see what we've got. So here we are starting in the uh, southeast corner of the property and got the ever famous uh, wood chip pile that is decaying. Um, we have plans for this now. Actually, we have a few plans for this now. I've got to get this uh, sidewalk clear. I'm feeling really bad about blocking this sidewalk as long as I have. I, I try to get the at least the part covering the sidewalk cleared back over the past year and a half, and this time it hadn't happened. But uh, we're looking at the strawberry patch, and I wanted to show you my discouragement in the strawberry patch. If you look at last month's garden tour, this corner was just full of strawberries. And now it has no strawberry or very few strawberries and it has all this grass growing in it. And it's choking out the strawberries. If I look real close, like underneath, is that a strawberry? Nope, that's not a strawberry. Um, well, here's a strawberry right here. Now I have cleared out some of this grass uh, already just to save something. But it, like this strawberry, I, was, I tried to pull stuff out, but it doesn't look like that strawberry is gonna make it. I'm going to continue pulling out these uh, dollar weed uh, like I'm like I was supposed to have, but like I said, no one was here to do it. Um, and uh, the grass, but this is going to have to go through very carefully because um, I had a ton, a ton, an absolute ton of strawberry plants in here that I was looking forward to spreading out in this area in a more organized fashion, so that oh, here's one. Lucky here. Here's a strawberry buried in the grass. That's a strawberry plant right there. And so I very carefully come in here. That grass is choking it out. I very carefully come in here, pull out these grasses. Hopefully I will save this plant. And there's a few in here. There are a few, very few strawberry plants left, but this one actually looks kind of good. So I'll give it a little bit of air like that. And then we'll watch it and give it, see, it's just got a little bit now. It's also got a little, little sun cover. But uh, anyway, so yeah, that uh, hopefully the strawberry plant will come back. And there are several strawberry plants in here, especially down in this corner. You can see one right there. 
There's one hidden underneath there. And see, I've pulled out some of this stuff. But uh, we're going to be, over the winter, we are going to be redoing the whole strawberry patch. It'll look completely different. Hopefully, we'll have better production, too. That's the big goal here. But we do still have a lot of plants in here. Um, I think I did lose all my sweet berry, but I still have a lot of Ozark Beauty in here. And we will go on that. But uh, so, yeah, now, now I do still have that big patch. And that patch may be actually enough to populate the whole area the way I want to redo it. There's a lot of plants right in here, which is right underneath this uh, pomegranate in the shade of it some part of the day. So I'm thinking um, in the redesign, we might have to take that into consideration, a little bit of shade from our very hot sun. So anyway, that's the strawberry patch and it's gonna take a lot of work to get this. This is one of the first priorities in cleanup that I'm going to have to deal with. The uh, These jalapenos, have been suffering. I've fed them. I've trimmed them. I've harvested from them. They just keep coming back. And so, uh, like this thing here, last month, this thing looked really bad, but I noticed it's got a whole bunch of new growth on it. Uh, and I think it was last month when I pulled a great big weed out of here too, um, which we're continuing to get big old weeds in here. And again, I will be dealing with this bed um, here shortly. There's a, there is one other bed that needs more imminent attention than this but anyway it's just gonna be a matter of getting in here and cleaning out the weeds those jalapenos though uh if i can get the, the those that grass pulled out of here and get it get its roots back to its own thing uh, that would be very good now this stuff here is not saint augustine grass it's something else um that i'm gonna have to clear out of this area so we have lots of birds around here um I do feed the birds. I have bird, two bird feeders on property. Uh, that is uh, chocolate mint right there. Um, I've gotten too much chocolate mint right now and I need to find some peppermint and start propagating peppermint bags. Uh, this pomegranate tree is actually looking really good. I need to go down and clean out some of the uh, uh, suckers down off the bottom of that, but um, it actually has been strong. So I'm having hope that this pomegranate tree, and there's a bird right there in the pomegranate tree, uh, just they're they are very very friendly. It's a chickadee, but anyway, uh, um, pomegranate trees are looking good. This uh, this basil is looking fantastic. Now all the overgrowth here uh, is giving these birds lots of seeds to eat, uh, which I'm still trying to keep off of this uh, basil plant. And I'm just pulling off. See, this is a flowering tip on this basil plant, and if you can keep those from growing. Um, which I have to come down pretty far for that. Uh, see, I can, I can see there's one starting right there, so I'm gonna come all the way down to here. And you just snap those off. It'll actually extend the life and cause this thing to bush out more. So uh, I come through here from time to time and try to pull off those flowering tips just to keep it living a little bit longer, producing good basil. We have several people uh, collecting basil from the property now. Uh, funny thing is, um, I was out talking to the, the waste management crew and one of the guys said, uh, we were talking about what's in the garden and I told him I had basil. And he says, oh, I'm an undercover chef. Do you have some extra? And of course I've got a ton of basil. And so I reached over and I picked him about 10 times more than he needed and gave it to him. He went and put it inside his lunchbox and said, oh my gosh, thank you. He said he was cooking Italian that night, so he was loving the fresh basil. So I got a lot of people that get basil off our property. There's a few people I don't even know about, which is just fine because I have a lot of it. So the uh, plumeria did some beautiful flowering. Uh, it stopped flowering. Well, there's one flower. Oh my goodness, look at that. One flower left down here. Um, that's beautiful. Uh, but oh and there's gonna be another but see we've got other branches here coming out now which I this is new all these branches coming out the sides are new so this thing is starting to take off I need to find the place for this to put this in the ground I think it'll do a whole lot better um, brown turkey fig uh, shockingly has several figs coming out I don't believe they're gonna last in fact I'm going to pick these I know this big one down here probably isn't going to last, but I'm going to 
give it a chance, give it every opportunity to do something. This is a brown turkey fig and they are, they get big. So we'll have to see if I can actually get production from this thing. So anyway, Oh, and by the way, when you when you prune a fig, you see that white milky stuff. Some people are allergic to that, and it, it will affect their skin. So be careful of that uh, stuff. It, it doesn't really affect me. I'm a little weird. I can climb through a f attic filled with fiberglass insulation, and it doesn't really bother me. So anyway, let's go on across to the front door. So as we look across the mums here, which are in their growing, green growing season, you can actually see there's a lot of new growth happening all in, up inside these little clusters. And we're gonna be having buds on these in the fall. I do need to come out of here and trim up some of the dead stuff in here, the sticks and all, uh, maybe thin out some of it. There's actually new growth down in here, which is very exciting. Uh, that's the kind of growth we want to encourage. I think that's a... Uh, not, yes, it is mums. So there's a lot of new growth in there. We need to trim out some of the uh, old sticky stuff. I should have trimmed this, I guess. I need to find out more about mums, though. Uh, this one over here is actually looking very good. Uh, it does have some rough spots on it, but I've never done mums before. So as we're looking here across the hedges, and you can see they're in need uh, of trimming, but they're certainly not as bad as I normally let them get. Uh, I do want to introduce a new concept that I'm going to start here, and you, you'll already have seen it in the lower corner of the screen here, is this map of our property. Now, our property that we're doing these garden tours is 100 by 106 feet. That is about a, quarter, a little under a quarter acre lot. And this property, you can see here on the left, it, there's a magnolia tree here, there's a magnolia tree over on the right, uh, the uh, here's the um, date palm over here and uh, then the road along the road here this picture was actually taken in the winter so the, uh, the, the the American sycamore tree doesn't have very many leaves on it neither do the uh, well the crepe myrtles are kind of thin here too so uh, this is a good image for that we're gonna I'm gonna try to use to kind of keep straight what parts of the garden we're at uh, as we're going through these uh, garden tours in the future. So we'll have to see how this works. Um, but as we're coming across here, I do want to uh, take a moment and look at the uh, artichoke patch. Uh, the fig tree over here, uh, it is really growing strong. New growth is looking brilliant green, uh, just fantastic. There's a lot of old growth, and a lot of what I'll do here is I'll just test it. Uh, some of the older stuff will actually break off really easily. Uh, if it doesn't break off easily, then I will leave it. Oh, there's one that just, I just barely touched it and it fell off. Uh, so yeah, some of these are falling off. I, I, I come through here and clean these out occasionally. Let me see if I can find another good one here. Uh, nope, see, that's good. That's a new leaf. There's a lot of new growth in here. Uh, it actually looks really good. Uh, remember, we started having some... Uh, this discoloration on these leaves show up and I fed the tree real good. So the old leaves are not going to change, uh, but the new, it'll have new growth that will change. So anyway, lots of new great growth. I know the growth, this growth down here is going to have to come off because I don't want them growing that low. Um, and you can barely see it because of all the weeds here, but uh, yeah, that's going to have to come off. Unfortunately, I do want that one branch right there. I'm encouraging to grow out that way because there's a hole over there. And if this branch can grow another one up in here, something like, oh, like this right here. See, that's going to be perfect to fill in this gap right here. So that's the fig tree. Uh, the windmill, you can see the windmill is barely turning. It barely turns. Oh my gosh, this uh, late planted sunflower it looks like it could actually give me a sunflower this is a rust off it's not a tall sunflower but it is edible it does make edible sunflower seeds uh this is uh bow ties uh petunia pansy i don't i think it's petunia uh has pretty well spent i should have trimmed it uh like i say every single year um orange bell pepper 
We actually have one here. It's a tiny, because it's in this, look how low the dirt is in there. The dirt is so low, there's very little dirt left. So if we get one little one out of this at a time, I'm happy. Underneath here, you can see some yarrow, and this will be part of the area that I will be taking care of in short order. Not high priority, but short order. And uh, this yarrow is, is suffering a bit because it's been hot, that's all. It has been hot. Uh, there's an artichoke, a, golden, a green globe artichoke here, there, there, there. Now that one has been my strong one. And it looks the worst now. And this one down here, mostly because it's getting choked out by all the grass and the leaf flower. And the, these are uh, more of the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, of the, uh, what are these called? Sun chokes, Jerusalem artichokes. I like to call them sunroot, as the natives used to call it here in the United States. But this is our sunroot orchard over here. And they are in pots now. There are still some pieces left and I have to go through here and pick them out. Again, this garden hadn't been cared for in weeks, three weeks now, four, and it wasn't cared for very much then. I came back from one trip and I was home long enough to take care of a bunch of jobs and had to leave again. So this garden has not had much uh, care. The cool thing is this, is, this is what I think is really cool about this. Uh, it's still growing. It's still doing its thing. It's still salvageable. And I'm gonna be spending some time coming in here, cleaning out weeds and so forth and stuff I don't want, and it'll come back. So the front pollinator bed. There are zinnias in here, uh, still hanging on to dear life. Uh, most of the zinnias have died. Um, the onion patch is still in here. Uh, they are still growing strong. In fact, look at this. I just noticed this as I was standing here. This bulb, right here is ready to hit it's trying to hit the ground um it's trying and that's what these things do these things get so heavy that will hit the ground and it will grow a new patch of onions right where i put it so and you can see there's already some over here uh look at this this is already putting up new shoots it's, it's rooting in there it's trying to take root it's trying to do its thing that one there will eventually get heavy enough. It'll bury its head down in the ground. Uh, this one here has got caught by a zinnia. Take that and stick it underneath these uh, Mexican rough clover. That'll take off too. So this onion patch will come back. Take a look at this in a few months. This will be a whole different area. The uh, angel trumpet here, looking strong is growing strong and I I've been watching and I just now noticed it has pods on the ends of these branches. That's gonna become a big, long flower. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. There's another one over here. I just looked at this a few days ago and I did not see these. There's a tiny, now that I know what I'm looking for, there's a tiny one up under here. Look at that, just a little tiny one. Is that another one there? No, yeah, that might be a tiny itty bitty one. Okay, this is the first time I've actually seen it at that stage. That's exciting. So, angel trumpet, big flower, about a foot long, points downward, it's yellow. <coughs> mm. As you can tell, I'm still getting over my, my sickness. So, excuse the coughing in your ear. Uh, here's one of those zinnias that's uh, hanging on for dear life. They look beautiful. We didn't get a chance to pick them as much. There's a whole little patch right there left, but they're going to just go to seed. They'll grow later. So this back pollinator bed, <laughs> confession, this is where the this video started. I kind of ran the camera right through here. All the weeds, but you know, there's beautiful zinnias down here. There's a uh, I see that this here is leaf flower. Uh, this is, I don't know what that is. That's something new for me. Uh, this is popcorn tree, which we don't want. Grass, we got St. Augustine grass growing in here all over the place. Uh, zinnias going to seed everywhere. Amaryllis right there, the big broad leaves. Uh, Thai plant, that's something we want to keep. Uh, those are perennials. In other words, they'll stay year after year. This here, 
You know what? I identified this and I can't remember what it was. It has these little yellow flowers, which are just beautiful. And uh, I know they're a weed. I'm gonna have to figure out what they are and if they're useful for anything. I've not had this many um, here on this property ever before, so we'll have to see. Uh, while I'm here, I wanna go inside and show you our lettuce patch real quick. Since this is a garden update, we'll do the inside garden as well. So inside our dining room, we have this bay window. And we have discovered recently that this is a great place to grow lettuces and such. Uh, we got mesclun here. This one's actually getting ready to bolt. We've been eating off that, eating off there. Uh, we've got uh, uh, webs. We've got salad bowl. We've even got some spinach in here. I think I've, oh, nope, there's one more spinach left back behind there. Bloomsdale, long-standing spinach. But uh, this has really been a good idea. Now we're about to go on yet another trip. So, <coughs> mm. so uh, we will have to wait until after that trip to grow our next tray. But this is actually, we started two trays. And then we started a third tray. There used to be three trays. Well, I consolidated them. We used a lot of old seed up uh, on those. And then uh, we're going to end up starting a third, a new third tray uh, after we get back from our trip coming up soon. But uh, this has been this has been enough salad for Mrs. Bowtie and myself. I, I'll put some leaves on my ham sammies and so forth, bacon, lettuce, tomato, so forth. And it's good. It's been a real neat thing. Check out the little video series on that. I'm going to have another one coming out after we get back from our trip and I'm planting up a new tray. I'm going to, I'm going to record another video of us planting these up. So that's the lettuce. We've actually already trimmed out several of those plants because they've gone. That's one of our bird feeders, by the way. I don't know that I've ever specified that. It's the, the cage, if a squirrel gets on there, the cage closes. I never see a squirrel on that uh, feeder the best feeders we've had. I've got, I own like three or four of them and I have two of them out at a time. But anyway, so off here to the right, uh, we're looking at the upper two beds of what will be the tier garden. There's gonna be five tiers here. Um, obviously the other tiers have not been made, but the first half of this is Blue Lake Stringless Pole Beans. And these things have really grown up. We've got this, uh, um, shade cloth up on top of here and it's just lifting the shade cloth right off. I need to figure out a way to get um, a place for the beans to grow away from the shade cloth but still be able to grow and thrive. So we do have blooms here so I'm very interested to see. Oh, there's a there went a wasp on top uh, right there. Um, but uh, I'm really interested to see if this will start producing. I haven't seen buds fall off, but I'm suspecting with our heat that they probably have. In fact, I'd be very surprised. I haven't seen any beans off this yet. So this is an experiment. We are underneath the shade of the uh, uh, American Sycamore most of the day. Um, we had something in the backyard that I did last year, which made me think I should plant this here, but we'll have to see if it works. So this is an experiment. Now in the second half down here, we have our Roma tomatoes, eight plants, four on, four on each side. And uh, these have not set fruit yet either. Uh, they're getting close, but they have not quite set fruit. There's buds. I see buds on them occasionally, and then I don't see buds. And so what I'm thinking is that all the buds have fallen. Okay, I know this thing had buds on it. Oh, there. Oh yeah, see right there? They're falling off. There's a new bud right there. I'm suspecting that they're falling off. This has been the better one over here. Yeah, oh, there's several buds right there. Um, looks like, is that possible that they were pollinated? I don't know. So this is under a 50% shade cloth. Here's some buds right here. That's kind of nice. 50% shade cloth over this arch trellis. And uh, it actually is held out by some PVC pipes, 10 foot PVC pipes. The shade cloth is 10 by 20 and uh, it's stretchy. 
So it actually will go over these pipes. I need to get it back out over these pipes so it'll hold better. But uh, it doesn't stay there. I, what I need to do is I need to figure out a, a way to wire that to where it stays out like that. But again, more basil. Here's four basil plants along here that just really seem to be thriving. Uh, I do, like, here's another seed growth point we were talking about earlier. And see, if I look carefully here, that's gonna start, if I, I would normally just come down one node here. In fact, let me see if I can get in here close. And you can see here, there's the, what's the thing that's growing the seed pod right there, okay? You see there's, two little plants coming out right there and right there but one of those this thing here looks like it might be getting ready to shoot a seed pod so i'll come down to the next one and the next one here same thing has two little shoots in between the crotch of the leaf and the stem and those are going to shoot out brand new branches and they're little tiny things so i know this thing will last a little longer so if i come right there pop that off i know we'll be doing good see now right here Here's two coming out. It's already been trimmed once in there. These two are already giving seed pods. The next two are already giving seed pods. So I'm gonna come down here to the next one. And there we go. So I'll break this off right there. Another one. You just keep these things, the seed growing tips breaking off. Stay ahead of it. And this thing will do two things. Oh, did I just break a branch? Oh, I just broke the whole branch. Doggone it. Well, sugar snaps, that's fine. But what happens, these things get bushier and bushier and bushier as you break off those tips. And they become a bushy plant, but see now, look how wonderful this one looks. I see one little growing tip right there. And as I'm walking around, I just pop those little tips off, very minimal, I mean, think about it. I hadn't been here in three weeks. I did break a few tips off just a few days ago for a few minutes. We do have some uh, leaf miner in here. It's an insect that tunnels its way in the middle of the leaf. I flip it over here. Well, that one doesn't even show damage. But it tunnels its way inside the leaf. Should probably trim those bad ones off of there, but I am not wanting to right now. Well, this one's pretty high up. I'm gonna take off that one just starting right there. This one's pretty advanced. But it's standard. These beans grow so fast it, it won't matter. So I did have some onions down here. I've uh, decided there's still some onion bulbs in the ground here. I'm kind of curious if they're going to go to seed uh, in the spring. We'll have to see. But anyway, that's the top two tiers of the tier garden. And there will be three more tiers down here. I finally have the full plan in mind on what I'm going to do. The trees, no change. They're looking great. The American sycamore. Uh, this tree is really interesting. As some people say, oh, it's dying because the bark is peeling. No, this is what it does. It grows new bark and it peels. And sometimes this looks a lot more bare than it does right now. And then it grows it back. It's just the life cycle of the American sycamore tree. Uh, so it's doing its thing. It's uh, being strong. Uh, it is a kind of a trashy tree. It drops branches. See, I can see some dead leaves right there. That branch is going to fall off. I just have to keep an eye out for it and throw it away. So, but it is great. Look how big those leaves are. This is a lot of great compost up in here. I love it. And I love the broad leaves that blocks the sun. So our crepe myrtles, uh, this one is almost done blooming. In fact, let me go around the front side. You can see out here, the first one is got some blooms still up there, some blooms down here. And then the second tree is actually starting to bloom all over the place too. So it's looking great. The, uh, the doomed decorative pear tree over here is of course doing nothing. And uh, it is coming down because it's going to be blocking the sun from the tear garden. So what I'm calling the cedar tree has absolutely zero change. It is completely unaffected by our weather, as is the date palm. You'll notice right up in there, that yellow is another uh, cluster of dates that is broken open. And it's yellow flowers now, and the pollinators will be all over it for a while. In fact, I see them. There's actually bees all over it right now. So that's the, the 
miscellaneous tree update coming down here to the asparagus patch. So this is one of the areas that we're gonna take care of a little differently. This asparagus patch, I call it the asparagus patch. I have one asparagus plant in here. Hopefully we'll have more. There's a yarrow over here. There's two basil plants, which is two of them. In fact, this one here is one of the ones I'm suspecting gets picked on a lot when people come pick basil. But, uh, um, <laughs> I think it's kind of funny. But, uh, and then there's a jalapeno up there, but everything from about here over, save that one basil plant, everything from here over, uh, this is all weeds. And so I'm going to start tarping this, which means you just take a tarp and mow it, cover it over with the black side facing up, weigh it down with some bricks and leave it there for a few months. And all this will be all the way down to the mulch in no time. So I'm gonna start doing that in some places. In fact, up here under the uh, um, citrus trees, which we'll be having to deal with this year, uh, gonna do the same thing. There's actually a uh, hardware cloth underneath here, and I'm gonna be tarping areas here at a time, try to get this back in control. So obviously the area where the bricks are on, kind of irrelevant, but uh, yeah, all these areas out here where there's stuff growing, um, that's a little, Going a little wild. Uh, the grapefruit tree here, um, I'm suspecting that I probably should have at one point just cut this thing off right as low as I can and, and let it grow from there with full energy. I think I may have uh, messed that up, I don't know. Suspecting that on all my trees, though this was a very bad freeze we had over Christmas this past year. So I think both of these uh, Satsuma orange trees over here are a complete write-off. Coming over here to the grapevine. <clears throat> and the grapes, we had a few small bunches of grapes. These things are growing crazy. I really didn't expect them to grow all the way over and then start coming down the other side, but they are seem they seem just as happy to do that. So um we did have a few grapes in here. I ate some. Uh, I don't, I think the birds got, probably got about half of them because I didn't cover them or anything. There's just little clusters of a few grapes and I don't think we even have any left. I don't see any anymore. Like I see there was a bunch right there. Oh, here's a, here's a perfect. This is where a bunch was hanging. One, two, three, four, five, five grapes were on that thing. So little tiny clusters. First year these things produce grapes. So I'm not disappointed. I feel really good about that. So we will be coming through here and trying to figure out how to trim this. It is a disorganized mess right now and I never did add two more cattle panels back here so that it could continue to grow that way. Which is no surprise. <laughs> Okay, seedlings looking really rough, grown over completely, taken over by uh, weeds. These uh, dragon cayenne and tie hots, you can tell tie hots because when they're red, they stick straight up. The dragon cayenne, when they're red, hang down. That's the only way I can tell the difference outside of eating them. And these are a whole lot hotter. These are about 10 times hotter than those. So it's not my favorite thing to do. But a lot of pepper plants in here never got planted. Look at that thing right there. I've actually harvested peppers off of these things. So uh, underneath here we have tomato plants that are just trying to escape the ever-growing um, St. Augustine grass that we have. That's what it does when you don't mow it. And the, there, I see there's a grapevine in here. There's all kinds of stuff growing in here. That's okay. The important stuff, the pomegranate trees are over there. <clears throat> there were some um, rose, oh, the rosemary plants are back around on the other side here at the end. Uh, these are doing just fine. Have, need to come through and weed these, of course, but they're actually looking pretty good. All the pepper plants, there's citronella in here. That's a citronella, there's two citronella plants right there. No, no, that's just one. Um, there's another one in the back there. There's another one in the yellow pot, and then there's one right next to it in the orange pot. But so 
So yeah, we have uh, Fatale pepper along here at the end, those yellow ones. <clears throat> this is a peri-peri, and this is now a dead bag. Oh, actually, no, it's not. I take that back. It's leaning over here. Uh, yeah, okay. Not much left of that. Got to get that grass off there so maybe it can thrive. These Scotch bonnet have been prolific. I've got two full gallon bags packed tight in the freezer of the Scotch bonnet. So we're going to start processing those very soon. More Scotch bonnet. Uh, I don't know what this is here. This is probably a bell pepper of some kind. Yeah, there it is. Chinese giant bell pepper. Not very giant. <laughs> jalapeno back there ready to get harvested. Another jalapeno. Poinsettia. There's a mint plant. That is probably a peppermint. Ooh, no, that's a mountain mint. That is a mountain mint. I need to find some peppermint somewhere. Um, there is a mystery plant down here. I need to find out what it is. And I believe this is Wandering Jew. So I'm hoping it's something else. And I can't think of the name of it. So, back here to the blueberries. <laughs> Let's have a quick discussion on these blueberries. So all that you just saw me clear out was four weeks worth of growth. Uh, and I filled, almost filled a wheelbarrow <laughs> with those vines. And I think that may be, no, I don't know what kind of vine that is. Some kind of ivy that grows rampant around here that I have to keep off of everything over here. This year has been worse, worse than usual. So my uh, safety glasses are clogging up or fogging up a little bit. I was inside cooling off for a few minutes. Uh, got a little overheated there. I'm still not back up to full strength from uh, being sick, I guess. But anyway, that's the uh, front and side garden tours. I hope you enjoyed the little uh, icon in the corner here that showed where in the garden we were. Uh, maybe that'll help people keep straight where we are. We're not a big garden, 100 feet by 106 feet. And uh, kind of disappointing that we uh, let that smaller garden go so rampant. <laughs> but really, you know, I'm just enjoying experimenting out here. Uh, my ADD, my OCD, everything about me, my health. I enjoy being out in the garden. I enjoy seeing things happen. It's just been a, it's been a very pleasurable thing. I'm in my fourth year of gardening and just uh, really enjoying it. And uh, normally my videos are, the purpose is maybe you see something that uh, might inspire you to try something in your garden or to start a garden. Well, this one is for those people who might have an overgrown garden and realize, hey, it's not that bad or could get worse or, oh, mine's a lot worse than his. How is he ever, how is he ever gonna recover from that? So I'll be doing a, whew, I'm, still winded. I'll be doing a uh, video here on uh, that tarping up there in the asparagus patch and uh, that'll be a not a very long video. Got some lawn care happening over my shoulder here but uh, anyway so this is the first of the three-part garden tours for the month of August 2023. A very Zooey, in a zoo, like a lot like a zoo year. My uh, my brother texted me that word last night or yesterday, I think it was. Thought, yeah, that's a that's an apt description for this year. Uh, it's been like a zoo. So anyway, um, just got to take it one day at a time, one bed at a time, one thing at a time, and kind of what we're down to. Can't lose hope. It's not about hope. It's just about, hey, wasn't a great year. Let's try again next year. Uh, weather's going to be cooling down here soon. Cool weather will be nice to get out into and and uh, um, start to work in out in the yard garden. Uh, as a handyman, I've only been doing indoor jobs for a while now. So, which haven't been many because we've been traveling so much. But, uh, 
anyway, you saw, I mean, it's pretty easy to pull that stuff off the top of all the, the blueberries back here, so. But yeah, we gotta get a lot of this under control. But you can do it, it's one, one step at a time, and I'm a little bit stubborn this way, so we'll work it out, we'll work it out. But uh, anyway, if you're just stumbling along finding our channel, uh, we talk mostly about life in the garden, and sometimes just about life in general. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, all subscriptions are highly coveted and appreciated. Helps grow the channel. And right now, as we're trying to get monetized, it's the most important thing we're looking for is, uh, is uh, subscriptions to the channel. It's free, free subscribe. It's just a click on the little button that says subscribe on this video. But uh, if you're, you already subscribed, or if you watched this video up to this point, uh, thank you for watching, whether you subscribe or not. Um, that helps grow the channel too. And uh, if you thought this was informational, educational, inspirational, or just entertaining watching some old guy sweat in the garden, running out of breath here uh, then uh, share click the thumbs up on this video and share with your friends on social media yeah I'm holding on to the tripod so I don't fall over it's warm out here it's getting up close to 90 right now and the humidity is really high so managing to stay in the shade uh, but uh, Anyway, there was something else I was going to say, but at the end of this video, there'll be a white screen, and let's see, in one corner you'll see a link to the playlist of all our 2023 uh, video t garden tours. Uh, when they're out, if you watch this after the other two parts come out, you'll see links to those on the white screen as well, and a link to subscribe as well. But uh, I do like the playlist. Um, I use my playlists a lot, so if you're ever looking for particular topics, go look some, go search for some of my playlists for various topics. I got a lot, a lot of playlists right now. I've got to get organized, but anyway, before I fall over of dehydration, exhaustion, overheated, I'm going to have to say goodbye and close off this video and take all these ants off me from being in the blueberries. Uh, and the grapes for that matter. But uh, here we go. This is the end. Watch for the next part coming out real soon. The second part will be the outer beds and the backyard. There is disappointment there too. And um, look at the uh, raised bed tour, which is part three. There's even more disappointment. <laughs> Like I said, this is an overwhelming month. Uh, it's hard to get out here. This weather will kick your butt quick. So, y'all have a blessed day.